Hello everyone. I hope you've seen the new schedule that I posted on both of my channels, A plus BI and Cyber Math. Let me know what you think. And in this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum. We have a sum that looks like this, one plus eight over five, plus 27 over 25, plus 64 over 125, so on and so forth. This is an infinite sum where the denominators are powers of five and the numerators are perfect cubes, like one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, four cubed. You get the idea? So you can definitely write this expression using the sigma notation, right? Let's do that first, and I'm gonna show you the solution method, which I think is pretty interesting. I don't know if anyone has done a problem like this before. I don't think so. If you see a similar problem, please let me know. I'm curious. So we're gonna start but before we start, let's go ahead and write this as an infinite sum using the sigma notation. You probably know sigma, right? The summation symbol. Let's start and at zero. So we're gonna have n equals zero to infinity. And we have a fraction where the numerator is a perfect cube. So in this case, that'll be n cubed, but n cubed is gonna be zero cubed. So that's not gonna give us one. So I kind of need to maybe start with n plus one to the third power, right? And then divide it by five to the power n. Now it works because if n is zero, you get one cubed divided by five to the power zero, which is one, and then n equals one, two cubed, so on and so forth. I mean, if you want, you can also start with n equals one. It's totally up to you. Okay, and if you do start with that, it's gonna look like this, and maybe that's a better way to do it because we have n cubed here, and this will just become five to the power n minus one, so that you can get five to the power zero for the first term. Makes sense? It's probably more meaningful because n equals one represents the first term, right? It's a little better. But sometimes sequences have terms like a sub zero, which is kind of weird, but anyways. So, Yes, we were able to write it, but that doesn't guarantee that we can find it, right? Oh, by the way, you can also write it like this, which you'll probably see again one more time because we can just uh, flip this and write it as five to the power one minus n, which is the same thing, okay? Cool. So how do we find a sum like this? I mean, if you are given something like this, one plus one over five plus one over 25, you probably would know what to do, right? Because this is the infinite geometric series. But guess what? We're definitely gonna use this idea. So let's start with the following. And I want to define a function, f of x, even though it is an infinite polynomial, it has a finite answer for certain values of x, which I'll tell you. So suppose f of x is the following, the famous or infamous infinite geometric series. And as you should know, this is one over one minus x. It converges, in other words, if absolute value of x is less than one, okay? If x is between negative one and one, and if x is zero, this becomes one on both sides, so we're good. Zero is included, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and focus on f of x, make sure you pay attention to what f of x is, and guess what we're gonna do? We're going to use a little bit of hocus pocus, I mean calculus. Okay, let's go. So we're gonna differentiate f. When we do, we're gonna get one plus two x plus three x squared plus four x cubed, and then so on and so forth. And when you differentiate the right hand side, you're gonna get this expression. You've probably seen this before because we've done a lot of similar problems, right? Now the next step, I'm not gonna differentiate it again, I'll do something else. And you're like, why are you doing this? You'll see in a little bit why I'm doing it, but let me just do it first. I'm gonna multiply f prime by x. So every term is multiplied by x, that's gonna give me x plus two x squared plus three x cubed plus 12 x squared and then, uh, you know, I'm sorry, not 12x, I, I, I was just trying to differentiate, sorry. I got carried over. 4x to the fourth, so on and so forth. And since we multiplied by x, it's just gonna bring in x in the numerator. And now notice that this is better, you know why? Because when we differentiate this one, the exponent and the coefficient are gonna be multiplied, but they are the same. So that'll give us a perfect square. Guess what? we're gonna get to the end, okay? So let's go ahead and differentiate this product. It's important to stick to the notation because this is something we're gonna use at the very end, okay? So make sure you have good notation. 
Now we're going to go ahead and differentiate this. That's going to give me a 1 plus 4x plus 9x squared plus 16x cubed, so on and so forth. And notice that we differentiated it. And if you differentiate this using the, what's it called? The product formula, uh, you can just go ahead and do it. I mean the quotient rule, the derivative of x times 1 times 1 minus x to the second power minus the derivative of this, which is 2 times 1 minus x, but there's a negative that comes from the derivative of negative x, multiply by the first term, which is x, and that is divided by 1 minus x to the fourth power. You don't need to worry too much about this. Now, right now, let's just go ahead and drop the right-hand side because later on, I'm going to show you how we can handle this in a better way. Make sense? Okay, so we can leave the right-hand side from now on. Uh, even before then, we could have done it. But I want you to focus on this one from now on, okay? Ready? We're about to, we differentiate it, so now is the time to multiply this derivative by x. So that's going to be our process, pretty much. Differentiate, multiply by x, differentiate, multiply by x. What is that going to do? You're going to multiply everything by x, so that's going to give you x plus 4x squared plus... 9x cubed plus 16x to the fourth power, dot, dot, dot. And then we're going to differentiate one more time. And trust me, this will be the last time, okay? No more, no more. So we're going to take this expression, and don't worry, we're going to systematize this. I'm going to go ahead and take this and differentiate it. When I differentiate the right-hand side, it's fairly easy. 1 plus 8x plus 27x squared plus 64x to the third power, and so on and so forth. You get the idea? Now, here's where the magic or mathematic happens. We, the coefficients are perfect cubes, and the powers are x, x squared, x cubed, just like the geometric series, right? But guess what we're going to do? We want this sum for what? For 1 over 5. Yes, exactly. So x is going to be 1 over 5, and when we do that, when we replace x with 1 over 5, we're going to get 1 plus 8 over 5, plus 27 over 25, plus 64 over 125, and so on and so forth. That's the exact sum we're looking for. That's the very sum we're looking for. So all we have to do is take care of this, which is a lot of work, by the way. I'll show you. Take care of this, and then plug in x equals 1 over 5. Make sense? Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and do this now. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and start here with this, because I know what it is, right? And I will differentiate, multiply by x, differentiate, multiply by x, okay? Cool. Now, here is uh, x times f prime. Why do I start with this? Because I already know what it is. I'm going to go ahead and differentiate it using the product rule. Take a, take a good look, okay? Pay attention. The derivative of x times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times x, so x times f double prime. Derivative of f prime is f double prime. And now I'm going to go ahead and multiply this expression by x. Remember, that's the next thing we need to do. It's going to be x f prime plus x squared f double prime because we already had x times f double prime, so we introduce another x. Now, what's the next thing? We're going to differentiate it. So let's do it. Write this thing, whatever that is, and differentiate, okay? When you differentiate this, it's a product rule again, the derivative of x times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times x, and then plus, same idea, 2x times f double prime plus f triple prime times x squared. Uh-oh, that is interesting, isn't it? We're going to do one more thing, or is that it? Let's go back and check out. Yes, this is it. We started with this, remember, we differentiated it, multiply by x, and we differentiated it, and we're done. Awesome. So that's what I'm looking for. This is what I need, right? So what am I going to do then? Let's simplify this, okay? To simplify this, actually, I mean simplify this, right? So we have f prime, and then I have no other f prime, but this is x and 2x. So we can kind of write this as follows, f prime of x, plus 3x times f double prime, plus x squared times f triple prime. That's going to give me what I'm looking for. You got the idea? Let's do it. So what is, what is all these things? Okay, let's find out. Again, if f of x is 1 over 1 minus x, now we're working with the right-hand sides. 
f prime is just going to be 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. Remember that. And then from here, we're going to find f double prime, which is 2 over 1 minus x to the third power. Remember the rules. And f triple prime, the third derivative, is just going to be 6 over 1 minus x to the fourth power. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now plug those in here, here, and here. Make sense? Let's do it. f prime is going to be 1 over 1 minus x squared. Notice that we don't have f of x in the equation. Plus 3x times f double prime, 3x times 2 over 1 minus x to the third power. Oops, I wrote fourth. That should be third. And then plus x squared times the third derivative, which is 6 over 1 minus x to the fourth power, which can be written as 1 over 1 minus x to the second power plus 6x over 1 minus x to the third. Are you still around? Hopefully. Plus 6x squared divided by 1 minus x to the fourth power. Now we'll make a common denominator. Multiply this by 1 minus x squared. Multiply this by 1 minus x and multiply by 1. So that's going to give us the following. 1 minus x squared plus 6x times 1 minus x plus 6x squared times 1 divided by 1 minus x to the fourth power. And guess what? When you simplify, you're going to get the following. x squared plus 4x plus 1 over 1 minus x to the fourth power. Such a simple expression. What is that equal to though? Remember we had 1 plus 8x plus 27x squared plus 64x cubed where the coefficients were perfect cubes and that's just perfect. Now we have an expression or we have a sum for this and this is what it is in terms of x. So of course, x needs to be between negative 1 and 1. Now we're going to go ahead and replace x with 1 over 5 and that's going to give us what we need. Should we look it up? I already found it, but let me show you what that looks like. First of all, the sum is equivalent to this fraction right here when you simplify. As you can see, this expression came up before. Approximately 4.49, maybe 4.5 is going to be good enough. And then here's the more interesting stuff that you can look into. The partial sum formula and equals 1 through k. What if it's not an infinite sum? Then you have a very, very nice expression. Okay. And here's the conclusion that we just arrived at. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to follow the schedule. Keep up the good work. And bye-bye.